Good day guys, Mech Mike here with an update on our 1970 Olympic 335. Um, previous video you've seen we had this thing sitting around um, really trying to get the engine unseized. It's been sitting for 30 years and uh, we wanted to see if we could uh, just spray some lubrication down that engine um, and get it unseized and see if we can get this old girl running. It hasn't ran for a lot of years just sitting in storage. In awesome shape, 1970 Olympic 399, that's a, a 335 twin in there, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 28 horse. Um, doing little things, like we're getting the fuel out, you can see we got a little can beside it there, the boys were uh, uh, draining the fuel out. We pulled the rewind off, got a big breaker bar on there, and really trying not to do any damage, but just trying to break this engine free from uh, the pistons uh, seized inside the cylinder and just see if we could get it turned over with uh, ultimately the next step being that uh, we'd get it to fire. We tried that for a couple weeks, it didn't work. We ended up taking the engine apart and as you can see here, here's the uh, mag and PTO piston and you can see the corrosion, the ring stuck. It took the boys quite a bit of work just to get it apart, to get these off the, uh, uh, the crankshaft out of the cylinder. And then the next step was to say, okay, are we going to try to recondition these pistons? Are we going to try to reuse them? Can we pull the rings off? Um, can we clean them up? You know, we probably could with a bit of work. Uh, we'd have to be really careful with those ring lands not to get play in there, cleaning all the carbon deposits and the crud out of there. Um, but it was interesting. We were able to find some parts fairly cheap uh, out of rec supply for about 100 bucks to rebuild this top end. New pistons, new rings, uh, clean the cylinders up and the boys did that and away we go here. Uh, everything put back together. You can see the rewind working uh, good now and the boys are going to try to uh, fire um, this thing up for the first time and uh, see what we get. No, no more fuel you guys, it's flooded. That's all you get. <laughs> there you go. So it's quite exciting to see this thing come to life. Uh, a lot of smoke coming out of it from underneath. That's, uh, you know, that's partly due to the fact that when the engine was apart, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of oil put back into it um, during assembly. So you're seeing that come out. I don't think necessarily this thing would smoke uh, quite as heavily, but it was cool to see it come to life. Uh, the muffler, we had the muffler off. And you know, there's definitely some some uh, some of it's collapsed inside and rusted. So I don't know if we're getting the pop, proper back pressure. Really, at this point, just trying to get it to run and idle and playing around with the high speed and the low speed uh, screws on the carburetor, just to get it to kind of idle on its own. And then at some point, it would have to go outside when we get enough snow here and tuned in uh, proper conditions. It's just hard to tune inside the shop where it's so warm. You definitely want to tune this engine. At, uh, at operating temperature somewhere in the neighborhood of minus 5 to minus 20 degrees. But like I said, just really cool watching this thing come to life. You can see that uh, clutch on the side there. We don't have the belt on it, but it's actually spun open right now. We have to be really careful here that we're not going to uh, crank the weights too far and have that thing stick open. Just a few adjustments on the screws, and there it goes. It sounds really well for the age of it. Just really neat. I'm learning a lot of things about this sled too, I, like the fuel tank way up front and underneath there, that's the fuel tank filler, you can see the cap kind of rattling loose there, um, and the fuel tank is just underneath the engine. I never realized that, definitely if you hit a rock or something under there at a certain amount of speed, you know, you got to realize you got a full tank of fuel right underneath you. Just a lot of fun. So we got it uh, put back together, got the hood put back on for now. We couldn't uh, test ride it because of the snow conditions, so we just wanted to make sure it went back in the showroom. It come with a matching snow suit, some cool um, oil cans and things like that that come with it. So a little bit of a display there and just a little bit of history of what it was. It's a survivor, right? Like uh, we didn't have to do a lot to this thing to, uh, to, to change the condition of it. You know, you want to keep it looking like it did original there uh, sitting in storage. The paint looks good. The windshield looks good. It's got a few scratches here and there. It's got some odd decals on it. But it's just a really cool machine and a great conversation piece sitting in the showroom here. So stop by the pine shop and have a look and hopefully we get it out fairly quick and, and uh, can drive it around the yard and check it out. Playing with the old sleds, um, a project fell on my lap here and just kind of, I got kind of interested in getting back into this. Uh, 
forward, fast forward here about 30 years, and here we've got an 09 uh, 600 RS. Not running, needs a lot of work. Very cool machine. These machines come from the race department. Um, you had to have intentions of racing um, to pick one up. You could set them. A lot of them were set up for snow cross. Some were set up for cross country racing, grass drags, uh, you name it. This one doesn't run, needs a lot of work, it's been sitting outside. And uh, guys, stay tuned to the channel here because this is going to be the focus here. I picked this thing up, I'm going to haul it back to, uh, to my garage and I'm going to start going through it and figuring out uh, what it takes to get it running. Um, maybe a bit of a trail conversion, I'm not too sure which direction to take it yet. But just have a lot of fun. I'm familiar with these machines inside uh, from the production models, but the race department does so much different stuff underneath there that I'm going to be learning a lot of things uh, with it and it's going to be a lot of fun so stay tuned thanks for watching guys